Hi, so there are two ways to make waterfall charts in Microsoft Excel. One is by using the inbuilt chart type and the other one is to make it using the updown bars. When you do it with the inbuilt chart types, it's easy to make. It gives you the data labels, but it provides very limited formatting options. When you use the updown bars, it takes time to make, but it gives us more formatting options. But one more limitation is it is difficult to get the data labels here. Now how to make a waterfall chart and how to format them, change the up bars or down bars with the arrows. We've already made videos on it. You can go and check it out. The purpose of this video is only focusing on how to add data labels to our variance analysis chart here, which is a waterfall chart done using the up down bars. The problem in getting a data label is that when we made this chart, the data has been prepared using the totals, not using variances. Now for the target and actuals, we want the data label to be the totals, that's fine. But for the variances, we need variance value as the data label. But that is not used in any of our source data. So let us see how to bring this. Now firstly, to add data labels to our target and actuals, what we're going to do is select the series, right click on it, click on add data labels. Pretty easy, we are done. When it comes to up and down bars, there are a couple of issues. One is up and down bars does not allow me to add a data label. There is no option. This bar was prepared using a line chart as the base. So if I select that line series, I can add a data label, but I have hidden the line series. So how do I select it? It's going to be a tough task. Okay. I was lucky there. I could click on somewhere where I thought it is and I selected it, but it's not going to be that easy always. So what do we do? For that, what we can do is go to the format tab. Again, in different versions, this tab could be named differently. Basically, I'm looking at a tab where I have this chart object selection panel. In here, I'm going to click on the chart area. I have to choose the end series. The reason I'm choosing the end series is because the data label should come at the ending point. So if I have a bar here, wherever the bar ends, so this is a down bar. So I want the data label at the bottom. In case of up bar, it should be at the up. That's why I'm choosing the series end here. I'll right click on this and click on add data labels. So data labels are there, but it's not what we want because we want the variances as the label. What I have is the ending values. To get the variances, what we're going to do is right click on the data labels, go to format data labels. In the format window, if you look at our label options, we have currently what it shows is values and that's all. It shows the value. I'm going to say I want value from another cell. So let me click on this value from cells option. It's asking where is the data coming from? See, I already have my variances written here. So I can choose that. But again, one issue is that these are middle portions. The first and last is going to be our target and actuals. So I will have to select all the six. Let me select it and click OK. So I've got the variance and I also have the total. I can remove the total. So I'll just uncheck this value box. So I only have the variance here. This variance is aligned slightly to the left. It's not so nicely aligned at the center. But if you're happy with this, we can stop here and we are done. If you also want to fix this, depending upon your preferences for the aesthetics, you may need more steps, but let's see what all options we have. Now, one of the thing I can do is in the data label options, in the formatting, in label position, I can choose center. When I choose center, the labels are coming at the center. Again, one issue is now the horizontal alignment is taken care of, but the vertical alignment is not great. It's overlapping my down bars and up bars at the tip. If you're again okay with this, then fine, we'll stop here. But if you want to also bring in more aesthetics, you want to add some padding to this, then we have to do some extra steps. Getting the padding is going to take a little bit more effort than what we did right now, but not too complicated either. So what we're going to do is to get the padding, I have to add one more series. Let me call it as the padded endpoint. For the down bars, the padded endpoint should be lower than our endpoint. So I should be reducing some points to this. If it is an up bar, then the padded endpoint should be slightly greater than this one. 
so I should be adding some point to this. You could consider using the if function for this. I prefer a slightly different function here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end point plus I'm putting the padding as 250 points here or 250 values multiplied by sign of ending value minus starting value. The sign function basically returns negative or minus one for negative numbers and plus one for positive numbers and zero for where the data is zero. So in this case, if my ending point is less than starting point, it's going to be negative. Negative times 250 is going to be minus 250. So it's going to do a subtraction. So let me copy and paste it. We've got the padded endpoint. Now that we have added this padded endpoint, we have to add this as a series to our chart. So right, let me right click on the chart, click on select data, add, and let me call the series name as padded values. And the series value is going to be the padded endpoints. I'm going to select the target and actuals row as well. I want all the six. Let me click OK. So here is our padded points. We will hide this. But right now the issue is that this padded point is still overlapping. The reason is now the up down bar takes this as the new ending point. So it has stretched. I have to fix this. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this padded endpoint, change series chart type. This padded values right now a line chart. I'm going to say, no, I don't want a line chart because then up down bar is mistaking this as the new endpoint. Let me choose a scatter plot. Let me click OK. So this problem is fixed. We see this coming up nicely padded. Then I'm going to do the same set of steps we just did earlier. So I'll add data labels to this. And for the data labels, let me go to the label options, choose it value from cells, which are going to be these six values. Click OK, remove the actual values and center the label position. The next thing is in terms of the scatter plots, I don't want to see those dots. So I can right click on it, format this and say, you know, I don't want any marker here. So those scatter plots are hidden. I'll align the data label back. I slightly disturbed its position. Yeah, that's fine. So we are done. This is how you can add the data labels. And before I end this video, just to share some credit. So selecting the data labels as value from cells is a trick I just learned a couple of days back from one Mr. Sufyan Hamid, who's a FP and a freelance consultant based in Brussels. So he sent me a file. Uh, I looked at it and that's where I picked up the trick. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Hamid. And uh, I hope you liked the video and if you really liked it, click on the like button and subscribe to our channel and do share the video with some of your friends and colleagues if you think it's going to be useful to them. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.